Profit First is a system for your cash, literally built on like the envelope method. But instead of using envelopes, you use bank accounts and you're naming the business checking accounts certain things to keep your dollars safe and know where every dollar goes in your business. In the real estate investing profit first, I wrote specifically that you should have an OPM account, other people's money. And if you don't separate out your cash, then you could end up running out of your rehab money before the rehab is over. And it's the same horrible feeling as running out of you know the money before the end of the month. It's like now we're running out of the money before the end of the deal. If you've got a lot of money in there, doesn't mean that it's yours to spend. And I want to give you that clarity because clarity creates the confidence to make good decisions in your business. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Welcome to another amazing episode of Raising Private Money. I'm your host, Jay Connor, also known as the Private Money Authority, and I have an amazing guest to join us here today. This is the podcast, you know, where we talk about how to raise private money without ever having to ask for money. We don't even have to file an application. We make the rules. We are the underwriter as the borrower. My guest is a dear friend. He's been on this show multiple times before. We're in a mastermind together. We've known each other for years. He's raised over a million dollars in private money. And his real passion and expertise these days is really helping you keep more money in your pocket and not letting it flow out the window unaccounted for. My friend and guest is an active real estate investor. He's been part of closing over 850 deals, real estate deals over the past 10 years. And he's done it all. I mean, he's done wholesaling turnkey, the Burr method, owner finance, rentals, lease options, you name it, he's done it in real estate investing. Well, since he's had the opportunity to sit in just about every position and seat there is in real estate investing, um, he realized that when he really got to looking at stuff, that the money that was coming into the company, it was all going right out the door. There's like nothing left over at the end of the month. So since he had the opportunity to really analyze everything and be in every seat, he has found a calling and man, is he good at it. Found a calling in the company's finance seat to where helping businesses see where their money is really going. So David has helped real estate companies turn around from literally just about going out of business to building cash reserves. And how do they do it? Well, he is an expert at using what's called the profit first cash flow system. So to help even more people, just recently he's a published author and he's written this amazing book that's called Profit First for Real Estate Investing. So my friend's goal is to completely transform the real estate investing industry by helping real estate investors just like you make and keep more money in your pocket. In just a moment, you're going to meet my friend and brilliant strategist when it comes to profit first. You're going to meet my friend in just a moment. You're going to meet David Richter right after this. David, welcome to the show. Jay, thanks for having me back. I'm excited to be here. I know it. I know it. You're always such a joy to have on. I mean, you know, besides your good looks, you're smart. You know, you get to, you really get to tell people how to keep more money in their pocket. And I'm just excited to have you back on. But you know, in our previous episodes where I've had you here on the show, raising private money, I don't think I have asked you about your own personal journey of raising private money. Yeah. I'd like to start out with that. And here's why. Um, the name of this show is raising private money. So we've got, we got a lot of people that are real estate investors, seasoned real estate investors, you know, the newbies as well. 
that want to learn about how to go about raising private money for the real estate deal. So we, we definitely want to speak to that for a few minutes. And then I want to segue over to what you are so passionate about these days. And that is, you know, helping real estate investors keep more money in their pocket and not, and stop letting it, you know, flow, flow out underneath the door. Okay. Well, you know, the sad thing is when you agree, most real estate investors until they learn how to do the business, like you are able to help them with, do they even really know where the money's going? Uh, no, <laughs> that's a simple answer. Not usually. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I mean, you know, what's the, what's the mindset of most real estate investors? Is it like, you know, if I can just do more deals, yeah. then I won't have to worry about it. <laughs> that is it. And if there's money in the bank account, we'll be okay. Right. Uh, I mean, it, it comes from a lot of things too, Jay. Like we, a lot of business owners get into business, but it's the wild, wild west. Like we weren't taught or trained how to be good business owners. We might know how to do real estate or we might know how to do a piece of it, but like there's other pieces besides just making the money. And a lot of people don't have the keep money skill or they're never taught it. Like, and that's why the cash flow game is so popular in the real estate investing space because it's like it helps you to learn some of that, you know, those skills. So, yeah, I, there's some of the mindset right there. Well, and, and, and along with that, and I'm getting the cart before the horse. I said we were going to talk about private money first, but here, <laughs> but here, we, but here we go. Here we um, are again. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we are again. You know, uh, what do they call it? Squirrel. Anyway, so. And then you've got, you know, entrepreneurs, they're, they're, they're really, they start out, they're really good at real estate. They're good at yeah. negotiating. They're likable. People trust them. They do deals and they look in their checking account and it's got, you know, a hundred thousand or $150,000 in the checking account. It's like, Hmm, what should I do with that money? Right. Yeah. <laughs> as, in, as in foolishly do exactly. with that money. I tell people, I said, well, let's just go down the private money trail because Profit First deals with private money a lot. Because in Profit First, if you haven't listened to my previous episodes with Jay, I'm pretty sure I went deep into it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so let's go back to private money. So yeah. you've, raised, you've raised private money. You've, laid, you've raised quite a bit of private money. So let's speak to, the, to our real estate investors here on the show now that want to raise more private money. Yeah. What have been some of your favorite ways to raise private money? Oh man, I will say I, I got to raise private money two different ways for myself and with a company I was working with. With myself, I bought my own deals and man, I wish I would have known about private money from my first deal. I bought my first deal right out of college and after reading Rich Dad Poor Dad, I actually bought a house off the HUD home store, so a foreclosure, and I bought it with an FA. FHA 203k loan. So it was like repairs plus, you know, the purchase price of the house rolled into the loan. And, you know, that was a good first house, but I, I still, that was the very first deal I did. And that was the most money I took out of pocket for a deal because I didn't know any better. One of my goals personally as an investor is to keep as much cash on hand for myself to be able to weather any storm that comes. Because I'm a big, you know, Warren Buffett, all the people that have stayed rich for a long time, you know, and especially Warren Buffett's rules. Number one, don't lose money. Number two, look at what rule number one. And that's where from that first deal, once I actually started working with this company, I got exposed to the concept of private money. Mm -hmm. And that really helped me even know it was out there. So every deal I did from then, I would get private money. And then if I wanted to, I'd refinance them later or if I sold the deal. But my big way first was honestly like friends and family. Was there someone in my friends or family circle that was looking for a better return? You know, and did they know anyone, you know, and just asking them good questions like that. And then from there, I also, because I was supposed exposed to the real estate world, I got exposed to some good groups as well too, networking mm -hmm. groups um, mm -hmm. that I got around where they brought together high net worth individuals that were looking to invest in real estate then another way was another group that I was a part of where they literally brought investors and lenders together on a cruise. And I'm like, honestly, the number one way for me is just get out there, get out there, talk about what you're doing, but also ask it. You, I think I'm pretty sure Jay, your whole approach and the way that we approach it was, how is this good for you? And are you looking, 
you know, for a good deal versus I've got this great thing. You should look at what I have. You know, it's more yeah. of like, what are you searching for? And do we have something that fits that for you? And that's really, honestly, I'll never, I, I still, I wish I would have known about private money from the first deal. Cause then that wouldn't have been all that cash that I put out <laughs> on the very first one. Um, because then I would get, you know, the private money and then refinance later on, which I never had nearly the amount of money out of pocket, you know, going forward from there. Um, but I would say my number one networking number two is being exposed to people like Jay, like who know where private money is and can teach you. And that can go down that road. I remember back when we were doing about 25 deals a month in that company, like we knew about you, Jay, and like, I'm pretty sure we even bought some of your stuff back then. <laughs> and it's like, like we wanted to know more and like, what are all the different ways? So it's like, that was another big thing in our life too, was not just networking, but then who in our network do other people trust to teach about it as well? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Jay, like your, your name still, I mean, this is, this is probably now. 2012 i bought my first deal what is this 2024 when we're recording this so 12 mm -hmm. years later like you, you've been in this space for a very a, a great amount of time to be able to go out there build a great name for yourself and also to be able to help people and really get them the private money so i would say those are the top two it's like who's in your network and then your network leads you to other pieces that can open up bigger doors and bigger ways of thinking for yourself Yes. So you, you mentioned that you join networking groups that, you know, so can you be more specific about that? What, what, what kind or yeah. networking groups, like what do, what do they do and how do you find them? How do you find these networking groups? There, there's three that we joined three different types. We joined a local real estate investment association there's because a <laughs> that one right there is usually free to very trivial amount of money if you pay, usually mm -hmm. 20 to $50 a month to just be part of that group. Mm -hmm. And if you do go to that, I will say because it's a lower barrier to entry, you need to ask around who the real players are in the room yes. and like who is you vetted. Know, that's in the room. so important. I mean, for goodness sakes, be very careful about who you yes. listen to for advice. Oh, yes. yes. I a lot I, of those members in those RIA groups, I'm telling you, I mean, they love to go, they love to network, and they'll never do a deal. Right. So you <laughs> if you go to that group, you need to know who the players are. And I will say players do show up. Like people in the game and people lending do show up to those. I will say too, sometimes more hard money lenders show up where mm -hmm. it's going to be a little bit more expensive. So not always will you get the private money lender who's just like, oh, I, I just have money to lend. I thought this would be a good group to go to. They might be a little bit savvier in the RIA group. There was another group we got a part of that was more of a paid mastermind, but for dentists and doctors, <laughs> like people oh, with yeah. high, high net worth. And that one was really good because they vetted the members pretty heavily and they vetted us heavily as well too. So if you go and you don't have friends and family, you know, or you've exhausted the resources there that, you know, for the private money side, or you go to a RIA and then you exhaust the private money side on that side as well too. Then if you start though to have traction and you're doing lots of deals, you might be able to join an actual mastermind of high net worth individuals, which mm -hmm. is literally a room full of people that will private lend to you. And that's mm -hmm. where, the same thing though i've also seen in those rooms you still have to do your vetting process even though they pay more even though they do you know they're a much higher caliber usually than someone who's never going to do a deal in a real estate investing association still do your due diligence are they you know where do they come from how you know like and making sure that they that you have transparency with them there's a third group too um that I was talking about where there's literally on Facebook, the, a couple groups that go out there, they're called, um, you know, just investment cruises where literally you hang out on a cruise ship for a week at a time. And it's like, they put together private lenders and real estate investors. That's been some of the funnest part because you're literally trapped on a ship for a week. And like, they have like networking during that time. Um, so I don't know, Jay, if you want me to say names of those groups, but that's where you can go out there and look for them. Uh, cause I've enjoyed those 
those are usually good places as well too. Just always do your due diligence like Jay was saying and like I just keep reiterating, reiterating here and make sure that they're doing due diligence on you. Sometimes <laughs> a private lender has saved our butts in the real estate world sometimes. They're like, I'm not going to lend on that deal because I don't see it as a deal because of this reason, that reason, the other. That's where some of those lenders can also save your butts. But if you're just going after someone who has no idea in the real estate investing world, you also need to give them the confidence of what you're going to do with the money. But those are three way areas that I found for the networking types, real estate investing groups, there's masterminds. Then there's literally just like meetups or get togethers on these cruises that put you in the same room. I love it. Well, yeah, let's give value uh, to our audience here, uh, David. Uh, give them the specific names cool. of these groups. If you look up Investor Addicts, that's one of them. Investor Addicts, just like if you're a drug addict, it's, that's how you spell addict. They're in, they're addicted to investing. So Investor Addicts, I love the leadership um, there. Uh, they've got some great people heading it up. There was over 130 people on the last one, uh, on the on last the cruise, cruise, on the, on the cruise? last cruise. Just and that is, the, a, is that investoraddicts.com? I think they have a website now too. They used to not, but they used to just be on Facebook. You search them up, but it's gotten big enough now where they've got official website. There was also captains of the deal. I think I did that one year as well too. Um, that's another one, but I've only done that once. I've been to the other one like five or six times. So Investor <laughs> Addicts is the one that I go to. They have a great group. They bring together great speakers as well. So there's education, but then they're literally, some of the nights they do what's called exchange meetings. And people will say, I have X amount of dollars in my IRA to lend. And like on the other side of the room, they're like, who are the real estate investors with deals? And like they'll literally do deals on the ship, which is one of the coolest experiences I've seen because they do it right in front of people. And then they're like, okay, they do the agreement right there as well too of like, okay, like this is what we're going to do once we get off the ship. And they agree to be like, here, I'm going to take this money and I'm going to put it on this house. And they, it's, it's a really cool experience. Investor. Uh, I, appreciate, I appreciate you uh, sharing that. Uh, yeah. I thought I knew, I thought I knew about every group that was out there, but I must be transparent. I never heard of investor addicts. Yeah. The, you know, it used to be, you, you might know them by financial friends network. I don't know if okay. you remember that one. That That's what it weird. turned into when new leadership came in. And this one's been around for now two years, I think. So it's relatively okay. new, Excellent. newer with a name. Well, thank you for that. that hey, you all. Hey, if you're listening to this show, that was a huge mic drop right there. So make note of that. All right, so let's 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 leave private money for a second, sure. and let's go over to profit first. So, in summary, what is the philosophy? What is the strategy? Of course, you wrote a book. Let's go ahead and tell everybody. Well, first yeah. of all, everybody, the, the name of your book and how they can get it, and then, yeah. then I'll, and then you can tell them tell them the philosophy and the strategy sure. in summary. Profit first for real estate investing is the name of the book. You can either get it on Amazon if you just type that in, or you go to my website, simplecfo.com. We have a link there for the book as well if you um, want to get that. Then as far as the philosophy, I, I love teaching this, Jay, because if you're a real estate investor or you go down this road, you might have read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or some of the very famous personal finance books out there like The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People or Personal Development, or you've got The, um, the Richest Man in Babylon. Profit First has the same philosophy as all those other books, like pay yourself first, rich dad, poor dad. A portion of all you have is yours to keep, the richest man in Babylon. Profit First literally just says it in a different way with a formula. Sales minus profit equals expenses. I make a sale. I take my profit first or make sure I'm a profitable company. And then I still have the expenses there to grow the business, but I'm making sure that we're healthy. And it's looking at, it's so funny, Jay. We all... If you're listening to this podcast, you probably run a for-profit business if you're getting into real estate or if you are in real estate, but so many of us end up owning an accidental nonprofit. We don't make profit because we don't place profit as a priority in a for-profit business, and there's nothing wrong with a profit. That's a symbol of health for your business and your company and as a, as a leader and as an owner. Then there's the system behind it. That's why I wrote the book too and went down hard into the profit first world because it's not just that mindset. It gives you a system like I was talking about before. You literally set up business checking accounts just like in the envelope system. If you've heard about that in personal finances, you're literally giving every dollar a name and putting it into different bank accounts 
in your business checking accounts and your name it like profit or owner's compensation, owner's taxes to make sure your taxes are paid and operational expenses. And like I said, a bonus account, OPM. If you're going to take private money and they're going to send it to you directly, you can also give your private lender. I just was at an event, literally, where there were real estate investors who had set up profit first in the OPM bucket. And they're like, I love telling my private lender, I'm keeping your money safe here so I don't mingle it with the money to run my business. And they just feel like, wow, this person's savvy enough to actually have a system for their money. So it's like, that's why I love teaching this, especially here too, Jay, because I feel like this is such a synergistic topic. If you're going to do private money, then you want to make sure your private lender is taken care of and they feel taken care of. And there's a system for their cash. So you know, you're not just spending their cash on whatever comes through, you know, out the door. So this is where profit first, first the mentality, pay yourself first. And then from there, there's the system to make sure it happens because every dollar that comes in, you make sure you're sweeping it into the accounts where you're paying yourself first, and then you build your business expenses from there. David, I, I know in, since you consult with a lot of real estate investors and you've helped turn companies around from almost like literally being out of business to being very, yep. very profitable. Um, my question is, and, and I know you've noticed like a long list of mistakes that real estate investors make in this, in this world of, you know, not really managing their money and knowing what's going on. But if you, if you had to boil it down to one common mistake that real estate investors make as relates to your expertise, I have a guess what the answer is. What is that common mistake? Man, you're making me boil it down to one, like you said, cause there's definitely a laundry list. Uh, it just might be, it's not even more of a mistake because a mistake implies that you knew what you were doing and you did it wrong. I feel like in this space, entrepreneurs, real estate investors, like it doesn't matter what business you're in. We are not taught this stuff. We are taught how to make money. We are not taught the skill of keeping money. Mm. And I think that's the biggest thing that hinders people because they think it's this huge knowledge gap too. They think that keeping the money skill is only for accountants and bookkeepers to learn, but accounting is the language of business. And if you are a business owner, you better speak the language of business. And that's where I feel like profit first gives you a first glimpse into how do I read what my money is telling me and speaking to me. And mm -hmm. that's where I tell people like, it, it, there's mistakes for sure. Like if you're just like, Hey, I just want to go out there and give all the financial stuff to a bookkeeper or someone like that might be a mistake because then you're actually just abdicating responsibility and saying, good luck. Like I'll see you next year when you have my taxes filed. But I would say it goes even upstream more than that. It's the, we're not taught to keep money skills. So we don't even know where to start. Got you. Great answer. David, what's the best way for people to get in contact with you? Yeah so they can learn about how you can help them keep more money. Obviously get your book, obviously yeah. get your yeah. book, but how else? So simplecfo.com. If they actually go to simplecfo.com forward slash gift, then you can download my book for free. Uh, oh, the wow. Thing, the ebook, the audio book. I also give a profit first cheat sheet because if I'm going to tell you the biggest mistakes, no one's teaching this. I want to teach you like, let me give you the first steps of profit first. So even I don't, and that's what I love about the system. If you're doing one deal or you're at deal a thousand, if you just start to implement it, you'll be more profitable from the very next deal. So there if you, you go, go there to that, you can get the book. All right. If you're listening to this show, go to www.simplecfo.com forward slash gift. That's simplecfo.com forward slash gift. And of course, um, your contact information, uh, this uh, that I just gave out is going to be in the show notes, all that. David, God bless you for coming on the show. It's been all my joy. Thank you, Jay. Thanks for having me. You got it. Look forward to seeing you soon at one of our masterminds. Yeah, like well, there you have it. Another amazing show here on Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, your host. And I really appreciate you uh, following if you're listening on one of your podcast platforms. Be sure to follow me so you don't miss out. Really appreciate the rating and reviews. And that way we get to keep having amazing guests like David Richter continue to join us. If you happen to be watching on YouTube, be sure to 
like and share, subscribe, ring that bell so you don't miss out on the upcoming episodes. I look forward to seeing you right here on the next episode of Raising Private Money. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.